Have your favorite tech reviewers and also the press been getting sent golden sample RTX and GTX graphics cards? Well, today we're gonna to be exploring this question more in depth, where we have a retail sample for an RTX 2060. This is the cheapest card I could find in Australia on a sale on eBay. I got it for a little over 500 Aussie dollars, which would be roughly close to around the retail price in the USA. And then besides that, the RTX 2070 here, which is a review sample sent from NVIDIA, we have an RTX 2070 retail Galax sample, which is currently the cheapest in Australia as well, coming a little bit under 700 Aussie dollars, or at least that's what I got it for. Then this one here was the card that we used in the original comparison against the RTX 2070 versus the RTX 2060. If you guys haven't seen that video, I'll put the link up here for you, where a lot of you guys said in the comments that this RTX 2060 looked like it was underperforming. And so I went back and double checked the numbers and Metro Exodus definitely was standing out as giving odd results. But some people in the comments were saying that this game was giving out uh, odd results to begin with. But I then sent Galax an email and said, look, this card could possibly have some weird results. So they decided to send us out another uh, RTX 2060 for this video for the comparisons. So let's put all these cards on the test bench and then come back and see if the press have been getting sent those golden samples. So I finished up testing all yesterday and night and I was benchmarking and double checking results and this gave me the answers that I really needed to know. So I'm gonna be dropping the Yes Man Happy Used Parts Cape Hunt Act and I'm gonna be putting on the Serious Face New Parts Investigation for you guys. And the answers I really needed to get came from these two graphics cards right here, the uh, Galax EX models. One's a black edition, one's a white edition. They're the exact same card at the core, exact same coolers, one's just got a white aesthetic and they even share the same V BIOS. So when I put this card in after this black card, it uh, actually recognized it as the exact same graphics card and even applied the same overclocks that I left when I took this out. And this is really interesting because as we go through some of the results here, we can see that this white variant here is actually performing pretty close to this Gigabyte edition here, which is a retail sample, one that comes in around MSRP. And uh, some of the results were really, really crazy, especially Far Cry 5, where we look at this Galax Black Edition here, clearly coming out well in front of even the overclocked Gigabyte retail sample. And then we look at the power consumption results, and we can see that they are in favor of this Black Edition here. And so moving through some of the other results here, and I tested these four games at 1440p, as you guys have been requesting, we saw this black edition here just give the retail sample a beatdown and its own white edition variant a beatdown as well. Uh, Apex Legends was a similar story. I decided to start uh, testing at water treatment since I believe this game is now hard locked at 144 FPS. So I tested again, 1440p was a great resolution to test that to make sure we weren't hitting that cap. And we can see in tandem that the RTX 2070 samples I have here actually are performing very close to one another. There's not too much of a discrepancy here, but these three RTX 2060 samples clearly have some variants going on. Resident Evil doesn't really show this a whole lot, and the synthetic benchmarks like 3D Mark Firestrike don't show this either. In fact, it has the retail sample Gigabyte card pulling out ahead of these two Galax cards, and moving on to Time Spy Extreme showed similar things. But then when we move back to the games, there is a clear difference. So what exactly is going on here? And this is where we're gonna try and answer some questions because this is the worst I've ever seen it in the history of benchmarking on my channel and benchmarking in my life. Starting off first, you guys are probably gonna want answers as to why different reviewers are getting different results. And I believe it has to do with GPU Boost 4.0 versus the previous editions of GPU Boost that was released with 10 series, seven series, and six series cards. And in that manner, this time around, 
it's worse than it's ever been because the GPU Boost 4.0 isn't just detecting temperatures and uh, also voltages, it's now detecting the quality of the silicon on board and boosting that graphics card in games according to that silicon itself. So in other words, yes, it's very possible that the press and your favorite tech reviewers are getting sent out golden samples and that is affecting their benchmarks. And sometimes it can be to the tune of 10 or more percent, which is quite a big sum to skew out results. And also looking back at my 2060 versus 2070 video, the conclusion and the results uh, don't seem too far-fetched to what you could expect if you go out and buy a retail sample of both these cards. Uh, so in that case, other reviewers could have got a really good 2060 in and then got a really lackluster 2070, and that would show that the 2060, especially when it's overclocked, is catching the 2070, which again, as I said, I haven't seen that around the studio here. But further proof of this and things that weird me out is these cards here perform pretty much identical in the simulated benchmarks like Fire Strike and Time Spy Extreme. But when we look at the power consumption results, they were pretty much the same as well. And the only indicator that I had to show that these cards were differing in the gaming benchmarks was the scores themselves, but also the core clocks that averaged out in MSI Afterburner. This black edition here was clearly overclocking better on the core clocks than this white edition here. But from going on forward from here in every review I do with these graphics cards, especially the main one in focus, I'm gonna be showing the core clocks averaged out and also the core clocks averaged out when they're overclocked. Those are the two main factors that will affect performance. You guys can get an indication of how well this card is performing compared to other reviewers' cards, and then you can check their results and cross-reference and say, hey, he got a bad 2060 or he got a really good 2060, and that's affecting the results. So that's likely where you're seeing a lot of these variances come from, and especially I've seen it myself in the last couple of months, numbers have started being all over the place. And so hopefully this gives you guys some more answers, but when we compare it to a CPU review, I think it's even worse than the press getting sent out uh, ringers for CPUs. And the reason being, in those CPU reviews, you can at least see that every CPU that gets sent out, as long as you turn off that multi-core enhancement, is gonna run at the same clock speeds. And so for a 9900K, you can say, okay, this guy's getting 4.7 gigahertz out of the box, but his uh, chip is overclocking higher, and we can see that with the 5.1 gigahertz numbers. And that's why it's crucial now to, I guess with GPU reviews, now include the core clocks on what they're averaging out to when that said person is testing the games. And so if you guys are scratching your heads, I'm gonna throw another curveball at you. And this has got to do with why I test on the same day in the same ambient temperatures with the same driver. Even though I don't test as many games as other reviewers or I don't test as many graphics cards, I always make sure you guys are getting the same apples to apples results on that particular day or that particular two days across the same drivers. And if we don't do that, then we could add even more variance into the equation. For instance, if we're testing on a 417 driver or a 418 driver, and then testing that against another card, which is running 419 drivers, and the ambient temperatures were 20 degrees on the 419 driver card versus the 417, we could see some results that just balloon out of control. And now I know a lot of the colleagues on YouTube, like Gamers Nexus, Hardware Unbox, Jay's Two Cents, uh, all those guys do their best to give you guys apples to apples results. But unfortunately from the results I've seen here today, the silicon lottery is going to affect GPU benchmark numbers that you guys are seeing. So the best thing to do from here would be to hopefully uh, test more retail samples as that's gonna be very indicative of what you guys are gonna get in terms of performance. But on top of that, I'd definitely go check out people like Adored TV who are analyzing all the different reviews out there so you guys can then get a mean from the average of reviews. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, then be sure to hit that like button. Also let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of GPU Boost 4.0 and now the Silicon Lottery, in my opinion, affecting reviews. This is gonna be an interesting topic and I'm actually gonna make this a two-part series where in part two, I'm gonna be testing out ambient temperatures and fan speeds and how they can also affect numbers that you see in reviews. And in case of the RTX 2070 samples that I had here, they perform pretty much around the same ballpark. So there's nothing to worry about in terms of variance of the RTX 2070 numbers you guys have been seeing here on the channel. And this RTX 2070 was a retail sample too. So that's good to see with Galax. And speaking of Galax themselves, uh, the one thing I will say is it's great to know that they're not sending me out uh, cherry pick samples 
as reference with this white card here. This came in before this black card here, so if they had a need to send me out a golden sample or they were sending out golden samples, they would have never have sent me out this in the first place. So I'm glad Galax, in this case KFA2 in Europe, are doing a great job of being an honest company and I get that vibe when I go to their events and uh, collaborate with them. Anyway guys, I'll catch you in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now. Bye.